from London Bryce. What about, or how about Alexander Madison to the Steelers for a draft pick? I've seen plenty of Alexander Madison trade buzz. I don't really get it. Um, like, in terms of, like, just selling him for Minnesota or paying a premium for a guy with a 4.2 career average. Like, he's a good back. He's not special, though. So if the Vikings want to trade him for a late draft pick, sure. If they want more than that, I don't get it from Pittsburgh's standpoint since we know they're going to lean heavily on Najee Harrison. Jalen Warren's not a bad player, I think, as a, as a backup if for a UDFA at least. All right, you mentioned trades for Madison there. Name a player you think ends up getting dealt. Have some fun. We've got about two months of the NFL trade deadline, then it's gone. We can't talk trades again for oh, you know, months at that point. So let me know in the comments section, name a player you think gets traded. Adam Page, Vikings trade for AJ Epinesa. I think you could get him from the Bills. I'll say this, though. He's not a fit for me. He had to play him at five technique, which I think you're okay with. I think you want him as an edge. Uh, you know, a 4-3 defensive end. They move him to a 3-4 scheme. I don't love the fit for Minnesota and A.J. Epinesa. If you want to make a full-time 5 technique, okay, I get it. But if you want to trade for a, a full-time 5 technique, I think you can stick with what you got right now if you are Minnesota. From Evan Hinders, if Minnesota makes the playoffs, will Kevin O'Connell win Coach of the Year? Maybe. Uh, I think it depends on what the other new coaches do, like, you know, if the Giants make the playoffs, Brian Dable's going to win it, right? So if they make it, he's got a great shot, but I wouldn't call it a guarantee since they weren't that far away last year. Mark Mulo, hello, Tom. Hope you and yours had a great summer. Thank you, Mark. Happy to have you here again. Is this the year that Kirk Cousins finally proves himself as a top NFL QB? I would like that for Minnesota and for Kirk Cousins. I think he's a very good quarterback. He's in the top 15, not top 10 for me. It's not fair because it's not how things should be done. But if Cousins has a great playoff run, he's going to help himself out. That's, that's a team statistic, but that's how national media and fans always view these cubes. So, well, NFC Championship games, like people talk about Jimmy Garoppolo like he's better than Kirk Cousins. He's not, though. Cousins is a better player, and has been a better football team, better coaching staff, etc. So he's top 15 for me. I would love it if he could have a bit more success, since that is the, the big national thing holding him back. Yo, just checking in, Chat Sports. I'm back. We appreciate you, Past Master. Minnesota has to start Seen or Andrew Booth Jr., right? They honestly couldn't be thinking Bynum or Dantzler Sr. Yeah, you know, I, I would agree with that. I think Seen and Booth Jr., I mean, definitely the future. They're first and second round picks this past year. So, yeah, I would say eventually they'll start. I don't know week one, but they're probably a better option than buying him and Dantzler Sr., but certainly an interesting situation to monitor over there in Minnesota. I think the Vikings are going to be pretty good this year, by the way. The elite, Spencer Rattler will get drafted by Minnesota. Um, Maybe in like the third or fourth round. I mean, I don't see him being that high of a draft pick. I think he will get drafted. He's got to play well this year at South Carolina, but Rattler, I, I'm just not high on him. Um, I question what he does as a leader. I think his leadership qualities have to improve, but I think him having a fresh start at South Carolina is going to be really big for him, and I think he has a lot of potential. Hopefully, um, over there at South Carolina, he finds that potential, but maybe Minnesota takes him in the third or fourth round. He works out like Kellen Mond didn't, and he's the guy for the Vikings after Kirk Cousins. Dark Horse Super Bowl contender. Hmm, it's a great question. Honestly, might be the Minnesota Vikings because this is a team that I think is going to win maybe 11 or 12 games, sneak into the playoffs, not sneak in, but comfortably make the playoffs, and maybe sneak to, let's say, an NFC Championship game. This might be like the Bengals of this year, the Vikings. Here are some other Super Bowl dark horse teams to watch. Dolphins have so much talent. If Tua can perform, they're going to be dangerous. Philadelphia is going to be really good. New Orleans and Minnesota, I think, also uh, or Super Bowl dark horses. I think all those teams make the playoffs, and all of them have the potential to make a deep run in January and into February. Who is your dark horse Super Bowl contender? Go down in the comment section. Let me know. It is the pinned comment on today's video. So when ad break comes, go down and chime in. Who is your dark horse Super Bowl contender? Now, if you want NFL, NBA, and college football coverage all year long, Hit that big red button and subscribe. We are Chat Sports has have videos every day, oftentimes multiple times per day on everything going on around the NFL. So if you haven't already, 
hit that big red button and subscribe. The Panthers play the Browns next week. I need a full breakdown on what will happen and end it with a game prediction, please. I like this question. I like this question, NFL kid. Uh, Baker revenge game. I'm going to be honest. I don't think Jacoby Brissett's very good. I just don't. Uh, last year in Miami, he was mediocre. He's a decent backup, but can he start and play at a high level starting? I don't know. But Baker Mayfield, man, I mean, I'm surprised he's talking as much as he is. I mean, he's given the Browns a lot of bulletin board material. Uh, but I still think that the Panthers are going to win. In fact, I think that it's going to be a close game until the very end. I think it'll be like a three-point Panther lead going into the fourth quarter. Panthers win by 10. I'm going to say 27-17. to 17. Panthers win. Baker Mayfield throws two touchdown passes, and he's, uh, he's going to be doing a lot of celebrating. That, that game means a lot to Baker Mayfield. Do you ever see the NFL changing their overtime rules to have a winner than having a tie. I appreciate that question, Mr. Sports, because I actually have a great idea. I think producer Jeremy Chugg's going to like this idea. So I understand the whole player safety thing, you know, why they don't want to play a second overtime. But here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's my idea. If overtime ends in a tie, you know how, like, soccer has PKs and, you know, hockey has, you know, shootouts. You have a kickoff between the two kickers. They start at the 10-yard line. Both kickers make that kick. They move to the 20. Both kickers make that kick. They move to the 30. They move to the 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, so on. And then whoever misses, you know, loses. I love it. It's a great idea. And then kickers are going to be very valuable in those type of situations. So the overtime rule should be changed. I mean, in American sports in the year 2022, there should be no ties. That should be illegal. They should change the rule. I think that would be a lot of fun, a little uh, – kickoff, uh, I don't know what they'd call it, kick, shootout, I don't know, but it should happen. All right, from Vince, who is most likely, or who is the most likely real upset in week one? Okay, so you're talking about real upsets, so I, I will use the Vegas odds from that standpoint to help determine the upsets. Um, the The Vikings are not nearly the as big of a underdog as I would think that they are, or that they should be from that standpoint. That's kind of, hmm, interesting. Uh, I do like the idea of, of the meme upset of Joe Flacco beating the Ravens. Not going to get my hopes up for that one. That seems a bit uh, a bit unlikely. So I like the Vikings over the Packers. I think that's a pretty realistic one from that standpoint. Beyond that, I mean, I don't see the Falcons beating the Saints. Lions-Eagles would be fun because it's the Lions, but I think Eagles win that one. So I'll go Vikings over the Packers. On BetUS, if you use promo code NFL Daily for a 125% deposit bonus. That's the link right there, chatsports.com slash bet. So if you put $100 in, you can get $125 in free cash to bet with. That's a great deal. Go and take advantage. A lot of great games to bet on this weekend over there, chatsports.com slash bet. They got college football, NFL, prop bets, everything you need to bet on. They got it. Chatsports.com slash bet. Who are your top three breakout candidates for running back and for wide receiver this year? It's a great question. If a, I don't think I can count a rookie as a, as a breakout candidate here. Uh, I think Elijah Mitchell is going to be outstanding for San Francisco. I get it. They lost Mostert, but he's going to be the guy there going forward. I think he's going to be really good. Um, who else here? I think Chase Edmonds for the Dolphins is going to be really, really good. I think he's going to have a breakout year. And then when you look at some other guys, um, hmm, who else? Who else? Oh, yeah, Nico Collins, wide receiver for the Texans, going to have a good year. I think Jalen Waddell, I don't know if I call it a breakout year because he's really good in his rookie year, but when you look at what he did in his rookie year, like that was against CB1s. He's going to make CB2s look silly this year. Nico Collins for the Texans, as producer Jeremy Chuggs mentioned, He's going to have a really big breakout year as well. Um, again, Damian Pierce, I think, is going to have a good year. Um, here's another breakout candidate. Um, what do you, oh, Devontae Smith? Yeah, he might be good. Because now they have A.J. Brown. He does. He has. He takes a lot of pressure off him. So, yeah, Devontae Smith, too, in Philadelphia, I'd say, is going to have a breakout year. What do you think about QB Will Levis from Kentucky? Michael, you're asking the right guy. I am a big Will Levis fan. I am such a big Will Levis fan that I might have to start doing mayonnaise in my coffee. That's how much I like Will Levis. I think he's going to be a stud at the next level. 
I think he has everything it takes to succeed at the next level. He looked great in their first game against Miami of Ohio. Won me some dough. I appreciate you, Will Levis. I think Will Levis from Kentucky is the real deal. I think he's going to be the third quarterback taken in this year's draft. I should say next year's draft behind uh, C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. Junior Estrada, NFL draft sleepers for next year. Ooh, kind of early uh, with just week one of the season. I was kind of hoping it was going to be Devin Leary at quarterback, and then he uh, he didn't play very well in the first game. That was pretty disappointing. Jacks in my ear saying Emory Jones. No. Sorry. Um, overall, it's a little early for draft sleeper conversations. If you check out the channel, I did some week one winners that I was pretty impressed by from that standpoint. Some losers in there as well. Like Mayan Williams, not a guy on my radar, even though he played for Ohio State. Played awesome. Uh, Rasheed Rice, SMU, good sleeper name in there. Uh, FSU had some receivers flash in that opening game as well. Uh, the Charlie Jones from Purdue, I think is maybe a good example. Like Buffalo, Iowa, Purdue transfer, balled out in his first game for Purdue. That's a good name to keep an eye out for as well. Oh, and the South Dakota State Titans. Got I forget his name. That's a good one. Uh, UNC Panther King Animan Marvel. Think the Jags could make the playoffs this season. I think they're going to be better this year, which is a very low bar to clear, I know. And of the AFC divisions, the South is the least of the group, just barely behind the AFC uh, East. Can they beat the Texans twice? Yes. Can they steal games against the Colts and Titans? Maybe. I think it's tough because you got to win 10 plus games i don't see a 10 plus win jump for jacksonville but seven eight maybe even nine and being in the con in contention in the december i think that is possible